Lord, Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful time of the Sabbath where we can gather together to worship your holy name. We invite your holy presence, Father, to be with us, and may our worship today be acceptable unto your sight. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. For our scripture reading, let's open our Bibles in the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 14. It says, But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Let us all kneel as we pray. Dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, you know we are very, very happy to get through the rain and come to church. Thank you, dear Lord, for the whole week that you have guided us. Father, this Sabbath day, we pray that you will help us to keep it holy. Help us, dear Lord, not to be just happy of sitting around with our church members, but to be happy in enjoying your presence. Lord, thank you also for this rain reminded us that we are so much in need of revival. Thank you, dear Lord, for the promised Holy Spirit that will rain down this time as we hear your words. Lord, we also pray that you may help us to close our umbrellas of pride, of self-sufficiency, so that only Christ will reign and be lifted up. Bless our brother. We trust, dear Lord, that you have a message through him. Help us, dear Lord, to break open our hearts that we may find you enjoyable each day. Thank you, Lord, for your love and your grace. 
that was written in bold letters. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Let us all bow our heads for prayer. <clears throat> Gracious Lord, we come before your throne of grace this morning to thank you for this opportunity of worshiping you in truth and in holiness. We pray that you make us worthy to receive thy full blessings of the Sabbath through thy spoken word. I pray, Father, that you hide me behind your cross so that Jesus and Jesus alone will be lifted up. Anoint my lips that I will speak only of the chosen words you will give me. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us turn our Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 13 to 15. I read. Then they brought little children to him, that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. 14. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is a very beautiful picture of a loving God who even he was very busy traveling on foot, going from village to village, healing the sick, giving sight to the blind, and all sorts of these activities that will tire him for the day. But he is so loving a father that the noise of the children is music to his ears. Adults have this attitude of having children as noisance around them. And when the disciples saw mothers coming with their children to be blessed by Jesus, the disciples said, no, 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 no. Go away. Jesus is very tired. He has no time for children. Many times we adults have that kind of attitude. Sending the children away. Seemingly they are not as important as we are. And many times children who cannot answer back respecting elders would have very big question marks in their minds why are we not important to these adults and so jesus is setting us an example to make us adults see the importance of children in the kingdom that we can always measure the Lord can always measure how loving we are to our God in terms of loving the children. There is this reminder here that 
Let the children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Our riches will stay. What we can bring to heaven is our attitude. I, for one, is a loving of children. My major is elementary education. And that we have a special place in our hearts to love children. And so many do not consider loving children as a profession. But teachers, especially those who are missionary teachers, not just as teachers, but missionary teachers. I mean missionary teachers, there is this love for children. Even though you are not a teacher by profession, but if you have that special love for children, you are a missionary. Many consider teaching the children as the most difficult thing, especially with children with special needs, autistic, Down syndrome, the deaf, the blind. Uh -uh. Not me. Let others do that. Not me. But as we have just read, that this is a measure of our attitude, how we love Jesus most. I've been married to my wife more than 30 years now. We have asked the Lord, please, Lord, give us even just one child. He gave us six. And still counting. We have no children of our own, biologically, but we have, a, we have adopted orphans, not bone of our bones, not flesh of our flesh, from the mountains. I've been with Sulads for more than 20 years back in Mindanao. And when we see these children orphaned, we cannot just say no to the situation. One time, a mother died of diarrhea. We told the villagers, whenever situations like that come, you run to the teachers. They are there to help you. They too are doctors. But they didn't understand that. They, they think that it is just a calamity that struck the village. The mother was buried, leaving a three-month-old baby, skin and bones, covered with scabies, dying. They don't know of mother's milk. They don't know of cow's milk, I mean formula. What they know only is mother's milk. And so the father, the chief of the village, would like to help the baby, but how can he help the baby? There is no nursing mother in the village. And so he called his eldest son, please come, let us sell your baby brother to Mount Nebo. The the elder brother cannot just accept the situation. Why would my father sell my baby brother? But as a child of the natives, they do not have word against the father. The father's word is law. In the village where they will sell the baby, 
word spread that there is a baby for sale. And they came, but not closer because the baby is smelly. Skin and bones. And nobody dared buy the baby. And so the father said, let's go straight to Mountain View College. I have a friend there, Sir Darrell from Israel. He has no child. Let's give the baby to him. I was not home then. A boy popped up to my classroom and said, Sir, your friend chief is at your door. He has a baby to give you. I wrote a note to my wife working in the library, and I said, Darl, please go home. Our baby is home. And so my wife ran home, and he found the chief with the elder bro eldest brother, and he found the baby inside a white, a dirty white, what do you call this? Supposed to be white blanket, but it's brown already because of soiled or not washed for, for years. You know what I mean? But what? She saw in the eyes, in the big eyes of this dying child, are the messages, please take me, I need a mommy, I need a home. And so my wife, with tears rolling down her cheeks, got the baby. And she cannot just move from there, just tears streaming down her face. And the chief said, it's yours to keep, mom and they turned their backs, going home. When I came home, there I saw my wife still standing, haven't moved from her place, still with tears streaming down her face, and I said, so we are now a home, we have now a baby. After some three weeks, the baby's scabies got well. And we hiked three hours from Mountain View College to that village up in the mountains. And there we saw the father very sick. And he said, Sir, thank you for coming. But I am so weak now. I am not living for two days or I may die. But before I die, may I ask you to please receive three more of the elder brothers of the baby. <laughs> and I looked, my wife, I looked at my wife and she looked at me and our eyes met and we seemed to say, how can we ever feed these four mouths now? But we rushed him to the hospital. He died in the hospital. He died of rabies. After we have buried him in that little hill up in that mountain. The following day, we saw movements outside of our door at Mountain View College when I opened the boys. And I said, Bong, what now? What did your papa tell you before he died? He said, if we could just request you to please receive us, we can stay here. And who can ever say no to this? We became a family with four children right away. We asked God for one. Lord, just give us one. He gave us four. On the other side of the river, across Manupali, across Pulangi River, 
12 hour hike to the far mountains bordering Davao and Bukidnon. A mother died after giving his, her baby birth. Manobos can just bury, can just give birth by themselves alone from the Kamote plantation. And after giving birth, she would just help herself, fix herself and the baby. And after that, she can work, gather sweet potatoes, gather firewood, but this new mother did not make it. She bled and bled and bled. And after some few days, she died. After she was buried, the new father cannot just imagine how he can help his baby. He was found dead one day. He killed himself. While the father was while the village was making a coffin for the father, the mother was already buried. The baby sneezed. And the chief said, there goes Ephraim and Anilin already. They were meeting in the other world. And the mother asked the father, where is our baby? Why are you alone? And so out of love, the grandfather of the baby would like to kill him so he can be together with the parents in the other world. But good enough that we have missionaries assigned there. And they asked the chief for the baby. And they rushed him to the hospital. In the hospital, the doctor said there is no hope for the baby. It's a case of meningitis. But the chief said, you bring that baby home to me because I will kill him. But if that baby dies in your hands, missionaries, I will kill all the missionaries assigned in these mountains. Fourteen missionaries will die if the baby dies in the hands of the missionaries. So the baby must live. And so we asked for prayers from Mountain View College faculty and Students, please pray for our baby. Ordained ministers came to the hospital, sanitarium and hospital in Valencia, and ordained the baby. He made it. Thank the Lord. And I told my wife, I said, Honey, would you care for one more baby? She said, Enough! I had enough! What if... We just visit only in the hospital. Visit only. She said, visit only. In that hospital when we visited, she was smiling and the baby smiled. And I turned to the wall of that little room and asked the Lord, Lord, please touch the heart of my wife right now to consider one more baby. And when I turned to her, she was crying and the baby was crying and she said to me, Let's take the baby home. Let's take the baby home. We had five already. We moved to Mindoro. Why we moved to Mindoro, we cannot just understand why. It was a call from the Lord. And it was in Mindoro where we realized a big project. Why? Because this is the story. We opened mission schools out to the mountains of the Mangyans. In Mawan Mission School, there was a mother who gave birth three o'clock in the morning. And the school children came to the door of the teachers. Mom, Annie has given birth already. 
But please take that baby mom. They will bury her alive. Manians have a very cruel culture of burying unwanted babies alive. That is their birth control, said to say. When there are too many already and they cannot make ends meet because of so many children, when mother and father would talk that they will bury the fifth child, four is enough, they will bury their baby alive. Born with deformities, they bury them alive. Twins, they bury the one, save the other. Because they believe that if they don't bury these unwanted children, these are not normal children, bad omen. This is bad omen. Calamities will come and might wipe the village out. And so our missionaries assigned there went straight to the house and asked the mother to give the baby to her, to them. But the baby said, no, we will bury her. But they prayed, 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 Lord, and through an interpreter, tell the mother we will take the baby. The baby was forced to give the baby away. And hurriedly cut the cord and ran to the forest, not minding of the leeches. It's a long hike eight hour hike away but good there was a motorbike accidentally why was there a motorbike out there <clears throat> and on the rugged road on the first day of the child she was already traveling on bumpy rugged road and when the missionaries came to our house to our door they were crying, Mom, what shall we do with this baby? The baby has still dried mucus of placenta, dried blood. And when my wife heard the very sad beginning story of the baby, she said, baby, I will love you. I will give all my love to you. And so that is why we have now the sixth baby. May I call on my wife? And look at that pretty girl, our only girl in the family, giving us joy this time. She turned one year old, last June 12. So supposed to be on her birthday, we would be hiking up to, the, to her village and celebrate her birthday up there and let her mother carry her. Now, we were not able to go because of the bad weather. Our next project, brothers and sisters, is to put up an orphanage. I told the chief and all the people up there in the mountains, don't bury your children, we will get them all. No problem. It is now in Mindoro that we realize that God has sent us there <coughs> to make this special project of orphanage, to save all these babies from the cruel hands of their culture, amen? And I know, as this is so pleasing to the eyes of God, as God's heart is so big for the children, He said, don't let the children go away. Let them come to me and forbid them not because of such is the kingdom of heaven. May we open our hearts to the very treasures of heaven. And if we love the treasures of heaven, we too can be with the treasure going up to live in heaven. God bless us all.
Uh, it is time to uh, worship our Lord through giving. In uh, Genesis 4, chapter 4, verse 4, And Abel brought the best, the choicest parts of the firstborn of his flock, and of their fat portions, and the Lord had regard for Abel and his offerings. In Matthew 6.21, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. God is saying through these two verses that although He doesn't need our money, the fact that there is giving, that, that, that He has given us the opportunity to give, helps us to remember and his prior, our priorities and also to become co-workers with him in his work here on earth. Let's worship the Lord through giving. Uh, the uh, deacons will now come out to receive our tithes and offering.
Great God, our Father, thank you for giving us this opportunity to be co-workers in the spread of your grace and the spread of your word in these final days. We pray, Lord, that these funds reach those who will spread the word in the, uh, to, in, in the, in the good news uh, in these final days and to do uh, your work here on earth. In Christ's name we pray. Lord, there are so many perishing souls out there. Help us to open our hearts to receive them. Help us to open our eyes to the needs of these people needing a Savior. Help us to bring Jesus to, their, to them and bring them to the feet of Jesus. I pray now, brethren, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.